Hi, this is week 28 of AP Physics and we're starting Unit 8 which deals with electric charge and electric force. For our agenda we'll be looking at Coulomb's Law as well as for our lesson objective students will learn how a radius affects the force of attraction between two charged objects. Let's go ahead and begin our discussion of electric charge and electric force. In the slide states that an electric charge is a physical property of matter that causes it to experience a force when placed in an electromagnetic field. So a particle that is neutral with no charge placed in an electromagnetic field will experience no force acting on it. But if that particle were to have a charge, then placed in an electromagnetic field, that field will go ahead and either push or pull on that particle. Electric charges are either positive or negative. Properties of electric charges include the following. For the first bullet states that Unlike charges attract one another. For example, a positive and a negative will have an attractive force, but like charges repel each other. For example, either a positive and a positive or a negative and a negative will go ahead and repel each other. Second bullet states that electric charges are always conserved. They do not dissipate, they are always conserved. Third bullet states that charges come in discrete packets that are multiples of a basic electric charge, which is 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs, which is also the charge of a proton and also the charge of an electron. Substances can be classified by their ability to conduct electric charges. A conductor allows charges to move freely in response to an electric force. For example, metals are great conductors of electricity. The opposite of a conductor is an insulator who does not allow charges to move freely. For example, in a power cord, it's surrounded by a rubber outer casing, which is a great example of an insulator. An object can be charged through conduction or induction. Let's be begin with conduction. Conduction uses contact when a charged object and a neutral object come in contact with each other. In the picture on the top right, it states that you have a charge rod that has negative charges placed near an object that was neutral. What that will happen is it's in all the negative charges to the right side and the positive charges towards the left. After that, contact is made and those positives and negatives will go ahead and cancel each other out. So notice that there's fewer negative charges on the rod and fewer positive charges on the sphere. After that, they're separated and the sphere would have gained a negative charge. So that is conduction. They actually have to come into contact with each other. Induction is a little bit different. In induction, uses indirect contact and grounding to charge a neutral object. All right, so in the picture right here, we have a neutral uh, sphere that has both positives and negatives. Next, a rod is with the negative charges placed near that object, pushing all the negative charges away from the rod. Then those charges are given a access to ground. So maybe a wire is given to, up to the sphere and all those charges go through the wire and are grounded. So they go into the ground. Once you remove that wire you, and remove the rod, that object will develop an overall positive charge. That is uh, induction. And notice that the rod never came into contact with the actual sphere, but there was a wire to the ground that did come into contact with the sphere. An object connected to the ground is said to be grounded. A lot of the appliances that we use, some of the ones that have more computer chips inside of them. We don't want them to build up a charge, so they're gonna be grounded. And that is what that third prong is in a, in a plug. The third one is for grounding, and that will go ahead and go through the wiring in, in a house, and eventually that is uh, rooted somewhere in the foundation of the house, so it can go, all those extra charges go into the ground, which is why it's called grounding. Now, in 1785, Charles Coulomb experimentally established a fundamental law of electron force between two stationary charged particles. Now here's his formula. His formula is force, which is equal to Ke, which is his constant, Coulomb's constant, is equal to Q1 times Q2. That's the charge of the first particle times the charge of the second particle divided by the distance between the particles squared, R squared. Now the units of force, of course, is in Newtons. The charges are going to be in coulombs and notice that there's absolute value lines that means that whether positive or negative we're just going to go ahead and put the positive values and r the distance between the particles is in meters now last sentence at the bottom of the slide states that 
Ke is Coulomb's constant, which has a value of 8.98 times 10 to 9 newtons times meter squared over Coulomb squared. Now let's go ahead and take a look at table 15.1, which can be found on page uh, 528 of your textbook. The table gives you the charge and mass of three particles, the proton, the electron, and the neutron. Let's begin with the electron. The charge of electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to a negative 19 coulombs. The mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to a negative 31 kilograms. For the proton, it has the same charge as the electron, but positive. So it's positive 1.6 times 10 to a negative 19 coulombs. And its mass is 1.67 times 10 to a negative 27 kilograms. Finally, the neutron has no charge, it's neutral, but its mass is similar to the proton with a value of 1.67 times 10 to a negative 27 kilograms. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. In example one, we're asked the following question. The electron and a proton of a hydrogen atom are separated by an average distance of 5.3 times 10 to a negative 11 meters. Part A, find the magnitude of the electric force and the gravitational force that each particle exerts on each other. And in part B, compute the acceleration caused by the electric and gravitational force of the proton on the electron. All right, so we got two formulas to solve for force of electric force and gravitational force. For electric force, we're gonna go ahead and use this formula versus gravitational force, we're gonna use this formula as well. All right, now the average distance is the same for both problems, 5.3 times 10 to negative 11. But in the top formula for the electric force, we're going to go ahead and put the charge of the proton and the electron. Whereas here, for the gravitational force, we're going to put the mass of the proton and the electron as well. All right, so let's go ahead and putting in some values. And for the first one, Fe, uh, force, the electric force is going to be K. The value for K is 9 times 10 to the 9 Newton centimeter square over Coulomb squared. So we're going to go ahead and substitute that in. 9.0 times 10 to the 9 newton centimeter squared over coulomb squared. The charges of a proton and an electron is the same, just opposite magnitude. All right, so the charges are 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So we're going to put 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs for each one of them. Now the average distance separating both of these is given to us 5.3 times 10 to negative 11 meters. And that value is squared. So now we're going to go ahead and put all of that into our calculator and solve 9 times 10 to 9 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. And I'm just going to square that and divide it by 5.3 times 10 to the negative 11 squared equals gives us a value of 8.2 times 10 to the negative, C123456, 78 newtons. Now, for force of gravity, force of gravity, we're going to go ahead and use this formula. So let's go ahead and plug in our values. Force of gravity is equal to G, the constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton centimeter squared over a kilogram squared. And the mass of each one of those particles, for our mass, we have them right here. It is, the mass of the electron is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. And uh, for the mass of a proton, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms as well. The average distance is the same for both problems, so 5.3 times 10 to the negative 11 meters, and that is squared. So now I plug it into the calculator, and we get our answer. Negative 11 multiplied times 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 times 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 divided by 5.3 times 10 to the negative 11 squared. And that gives us a value of... 3.6 times 10 to the negative 47 newtons. If you compare both of those answers, you will notice that the force of attraction due to their difference in electric charges is much, much larger when compared to the force of attraction because of their mass. 
For that reason, a lot of times the gravitational force is just ignored. All right, let's go ahead and move on to part B. Part B, they ask you to compute the acceleration caused by the electric and gravitational force of the protons on the electron. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that. For that one, we're going to go ahead and use Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. So we want the acceleration, we're going to go ahead and just have force over mass equals acceleration. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do that. So for the first one, I'm going to put acceleration due to the electric force. It's going to be force over mass. The force was 8.2 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons divided by the mass of the electron, which was 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. We'll get our answer in a bit. And the acceleration due to their gravity would be 3.6 times 10 to the negative 47 newtons divided by the mass of the electron. So now we just go ahead and simply divide and we get our answer. So this is going to be 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31. It's going to go to an acceleration of 3.96 times 10 to the negative 17 meters per second. Very small acceleration because they're tiny particles. Though the charge is going to give us a much larger acceleration. It's going to be 8.2 times 10 to the negative 8 divided by 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 is going to give us 9.0 times 10 to the 22 meters per second square, which is an incredibly large acceleration. All right, that takes care of example one. In problem one, we're asked the following question. If the distance between two charges is doubled, by what factor is the magnitude of the electric force change, and what if the distance is tripled? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the factors. If you have the original formula, will be to a factor of 1. But in the problem, they ask, what if we double the distance? Well, instead of having r, it will be 2r, and we square it. Now, you'll notice that 2 squared will give you a force. It will be 1 fourth of the original force. What if we were to triple the distance? Well, that would be 3r right here. And if we square it, we'll get 1 ninth of the original fourth. So what happens if we were to quadruple the distance? It will be 1 16th of the original force. And so on, it would continue. All right, that takes care of problem number 1. Next is problem number two. In this problem, we're asked the following. Find the magnitude of the electric force between two protons separated by a femtometer, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 15 meters, which is approximately the distance between two protons in the nucleus of a helium atom. So we're going to go ahead and use this formula for the electric force between the two protons. And the Ke, here's our value. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So it's going to be Fe is equal to... 9.0 times 10 to the 9 newtons times meter squared over coulomb squared multiplied times the charge of the proton which is the same as the charge of an electron 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs and uh, we got two protons so we're going to go ahead and write it again or you could just write a square and all of it is divided by the distance between the two protons which is 1 times 10 to the negative 15 meters, and that is squared, so we'll go ahead and square it. Up next, you go ahead and plug it into the calculator and get our answer. So it's going to be 9 times 10 to the 9 multiplied times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs squared divided by 1 times 10 to the negative 15 squared, and that gives us our answer of 230 newtons. All right, so that's our answer for part A. Let's go ahead and move along to part B. In part B, we're asked the following question. If the protons were not held together by the strong nuclear force, what would be their initial acceleration due to electric force between them? So both protons are positive, so they're repelled away from each other, and they would have an initial acceleration. They want us to know what is that acceleration. Go ahead and figure that out. Well, we're going to use Newton's second law, which is force equals mass times acceleration. And to get the acceleration, we're going to get the force and divide it by the mass. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Acceleration equals force over mass. Okay, so the force is 230 newtons. And the mass of a proton is in the table we saw earlier. So let's go back to that table. 
and here we go. Mass of a proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. All right, so we have to do is do that division, and we'll get our answer. 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. It gives us an answer of, we're going to round it off slightly, 1.4 times 10 to the 29 meters per second squared, which is an incredibly large acceleration due to the repulsion between the two protons. All right, that takes care of problem number two. This brings us to the end of our lesson. Thank you so much for watching.